Yeah, I'm from um, Bournemouth uh, originally. I was born in Bournemouth and spent, you know, I suppose most of my life uh, in, in Bournemouth, uh, either Bournemouth or London. And um, yeah, I'm currently um, living in, in, in Bournemouth. And uh, yeah, I had a very colourful and interesting um, hour um, in the centre of Bournemouth, in the town centre, um, the other evening. It was a Sunday evening, so quite relatively quiet. And, um, you know, a lot of people say, um, you know, people from outside of Bournemouth saying how um, Bournemouth Town Centre isn't what it was and how it's gone downhill and um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, yeah, so this was quite a sad, tragic um, sequence. So there were three different three different things that happened to me or that I witnessed in the hour that I was in the centre of Bournemouth on a Sunday night, um, obviously dark. And... Um, you know, I don't know how many of these things could have happened equally as much 20 years ago as now, um, and how many of them are more, you know, sort of symptomatic um, of society as it is now, and some would say symptomatic of um, Starmer's Britain, you know, which will only get worse under in Starmer's uh, Britain. Some people would say that. Some people would say these are just things that, that, that could have happened, you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago. But there were three different things um, which made me think, you know, just in that hour. First of all, um, there was um, behind me as I was walking away in the precinct uh, near the square in Bournemouth Centre. Uh, there was a, uh, a middle aged, I'd say, yeah, middle aged, you know, local Caucasian British guy. Um, I think he had a dog or maybe two dogs. And he ended up in a in a in a in an angry altercation with some young Middle Eastern men. I don't know if they were students or, or living here, but I'm sure they were uh, Middle Eastern. I know that's a very broad definition, broad term. Um, but they were, they were, you know, Arabic, young. I don't know what had happened exactly and what triggered this, but um, he was sort of saying um, to them, um, oh, um, you know, he, well, he was racially abusing them. But then again, I don't know what had happened before that and what they'd said or how this had arisen and got triggered, but he was, you know, racially um, abusing them and fighting with them, and they were saying something back, shouting back at him. Um, and he was really, really angry. And, um, yeah, he had a... I'm sure he had a dog or two um, with him, and he was saying, oh, uh, in our country, um, we don't, um, you know... In, in the countries you come from, you know, you, you S-H-I-T in the street, he was saying, you know, you... Uh, you um, go to the toilet in the street or something like, like that, you know. Um, but I don't know what had actually triggered this um, precisely, um, but it was racist, it was nasty. Uh, I don't know what they'd said to him or done to him. I, I couldn't hear what they were sh shouting because I was walking further and further away. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, he was obviously, you know, saying really racist things to them. Um I'm not saying, of course, there aren't issues with immigration and migration and um, uh, and um, uh, sort of, you know, um, what's the word? What's, what's the word I was looking for? Assimilation. <laughs> because, you know, that, 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 I'm not saying there aren't issues with immigration and migration in this country at the moment. I mean, there are serious, major um, issues, but definitely he was he was being um, racist and... Uh, it was very nasty. Um, I hope it um, blew over. I don't know what happened after that. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, so that was the first thing. Then when I got into the square, um, a youngish lady approached me um, for financial help, for money. And it's virtually unheard of now. Um, it's, it's virtually impossible to go through the centre of Bournemouth uh, in the evening. Um without being approached for money, without um, the old begging. Um, and this, this young lady came up to me, youngish lady, and, you know, she was about to ask me for help. She was very polite. She said, good evening. I think she said, good evening, sir. So she was very polite. And um, But it happens virtually every time you go through the centre of Bournemouth uh, in the evening. She was polite, and I... I um, walked away from her and just said, I'm busy at the moment. Um, I was a bit bit cold, a bit aloof, a bit detached, I suppose. Um, I had things going on, things in my mind. I was, you know, on my phone and um, I felt bad in a way, rightly or wrongly. I don't know whether I should feel bad, but rightly or wrongly, I felt 
bad about just ignoring her and um, walking away, well, almost ignoring her uh, and walking away from her because she was very nice. But, um, you know, often, you know, uh, I will have a conversation or give food or drink or money. But this time I was sort of very aloof and I, and I walked away um, and, you know, rightly or wrongly felt bad about that. But then the third thing that happened was um, all, all in the space of 45 minutes. The third thing that happened was I was at the sitting at a bus stop waiting for a bus to a suburb of the suburb of Bournemouth that I live in uh, from the square, the centre of Bournemouth. And a guy was shouting in the street. He was, you know, he had a local accent. I'd say maybe 40s. Um, and he was shouting um, quite, um, I suppose, vulgar and abusive stuff. I don't know whether it was mental health or alcohol or or both. Um, and, um, yeah, he was shouting out, you know, ob ob obscenities in the street. And um, I was sort of not too worried about it I was you know I was on my phone again <laughs> who isn't <laughs> we are aren't we all the time now I was on my phone um dealing with text messages sitting on the bench and then um <clears throat> I had an umbrella um with me and um he sort of like took us he, 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 he sort of swiped his arm you know in, in front of me um made me jump I was on the bench he came up behind me came up behind the bench and um and um sort of like swiped his arm in front of me you know to startle me to to frighten me um and um, you know and then and then walked away laughing um sort of aggressive but also you know laughing as well as he as he walked away from me sitting at this bus stop on the bench and uh um then this couple came up to me and said oh are you all right you know I, that was that was awful, wasn't it? I said, "Yeah, I'm fine," because also he'd said, um, "He said um, I picked up my umbrella quickly. I think I just got up off off the seat, startled, you know, and I picked up the umbrella which I had with me and the, the bag I had on rucksack I had, and and um, suddenly got up and he said, he said, go on, why don't you hit me with that? He said, I want you to hit me with that umbrella. He said. So yeah, that was the third very um, sort of concerning and bizarre situation just in that 45 minutes in the centre of Bournemouth on a Sunday night. Um, so, you know, obviously, yeah, society's got its issues, hasn't it, at the moment? And uh, is this is this sort of stuff only going to get worse? Is this um, kind of malaise, what with, you know, many people that think that Starmer's Britain is going to um, be, um, well, we haven't seen anything yet. Um, you know, OK, so, for example... You know, if if the migration and immigration carries on um, illegal and legal at the rate it is now, and we have such vast swathes of people constantly coming in to the country, and as we lose our identity more and more, and um, people feel they don't recognise their own towns more and more, and if you know uh, there isn't the will, or you know nothing gets done by by this this Labour government, or mafia as I call them, about this, uh, um, the, you know, the the boats, you know, constantly, you know, people constantly arriving in the UK illegally every day across the English Channel, if nothing gets done about that, and um, more and more people just keep coming in, you know, uncontrolled migration, immigration, no numbers, no quotas. Um, and of course, the costs involved with that are astronomical, as people get more and more angry, um, and the injustice, the feelings of injustice get more and more intense. And obviously more and more money is spent on on um, immigration and migration. Um, you know, migrant hotels, health care, what have you. As this just gets more and more uncontrolled, um, you know, are we going to see more and more confrontations in the street like this? I'm not saying it's right. I mean, that guy was being racist. He was being racially abusive to those young uh, Middle Eastern men. Uh, it was wrong. Um, it was bad. Um, no justification, no, no excuses being made. But at the same time, you know, um, is this going to be more likely to happen? Are these frictions going to get worse in Starmer's Britain? Are we going to have more and more friction, more and more um, racial tension, more and more 
you know, misunderstandings, more and more aggression, more and more trouble in the street. You know, if we don't do something drastic quite quickly about this, and it doesn't look like Starmer's government have the will to do anything really about this very quickly, um, is this just going to get more and more common? And then the lady that was homeless, um, you know, as public services across the board, so stretched, um, lack of resources in right across the board with public services, uh, mental health, uh, mental health services stretched, you know, under-resourced, um, you know, are we going to see more and more begging um, and uh, more and more people with mental health issues or addiction issues not getting what they should have or what they need on the street? Uh, are we going to see more and more of that under Starmer's Britain? Um, the fact that I had three experiences, three unpleasant, bad experiences in the same hour, is that symptomatic um, of what's going to get worse in Starmer's Britain um, under this Labour government if you know we don't do something, if we don't use our people power um, to change to things, you know, to, to, to shake things up, um, if we don't use, if we don't protest enough, if we don't believe in people power enough, if we don't do anything drastic in a united way quite quickly, quite soon, is this only going to be more worse and worse, more and more of this uh, in our town centres? You know, so yeah, the, the lady that was clearly homeless or and or had addiction issues, is that, you know, a symptom of... Um, you know, is that is is she symptomatic of uh, the uh, lack of funding in you know f in public services right across the board? And of course, you know, people are very angry because huge amounts of money are being spent on illegal um, migrants. Uh, you know, uncontrolled, chaotic swathes of people coming into the country all the time. There seems to be plenty of money for that. Um, these are very real perceptions, you know, that many, many people have. And then the third situation that happened to me, of course, was the um, was the, the, the gentleman, again, alcohol or drugs. Well, I mean, alcohol is the biggest drug of all, isn't it? Alcohol and other drugs, I should say. Was it alcohol and drugs with him? Mental health? Again, um, you know, if, you know, if the resources were more, um, if our, you know, mental health services and so on, addiction help for people with addictions, alcohol, if they were less stretched and better resourced, better funded, would that be, would that situation be less likely to happen? And are we looking at it getting worse under this government? Or, you know, I, I call them a mafia, actually. I don't even call them a government. But yeah, so three very unfortunate situations. Are these just situations which could have, you know, happen anyway or could have happened equally as likely 10, 15, 20 years ago? Or are they symptomatic of, um, you know, the, the political situation, the financial situation at the moment? Those three incidents, you know, as I said, the third one was the guy um, having a go at me in the street, um, intimidating, but then laughing as he walked away as well. And then asking me, telling me I should hit him with my umbrella. <laughs> so, so that was a very bizarre very concerning one hour spent um, on a Sunday night in the centre of Bournemouth. I don't know what your experiences of Bournemouth are. Um, but yeah, three things in about 45 minutes. Sad things um, that I witnessed. Um, so, is this symptomatic of things to come? Or, you know, what do you think? Um, all sounds very negative and pessimistic, and I'm not. I'm a cup half full person. Um, but I believe, you know we all need to take responsibility in a united way and we need to, for, for the way things are and the way things are going, if we want our country to be a healthier, better place again, um, then, yeah, we have to start believing more in, in people power and using our people power, you know, protest, um, peaceful protest. We don't believe enough, in my opinion, in people power. Um, but yeah, your experiences of uh, Bournemouth as a town, I look forward to reading your comments and um, experiences. And of course, what you think about me having those three sort of dramas, witnessing three sad situations in the space of, well, three quarters of an hour. 
um, what's going on. And um, yeah, all comments and feedback welcome. Polite, respectful debate, please. And um, please be respectful to each other uh, with your opinions and in your debates. But all opinions, welcome. Let's keep it classy. Let's keep it decent, please. Um, no disrespect or abusive comments uh, to anybody on this um, on this forum, on this platform, please. But I really do relish uh, reading all opinions. And um, yeah, thinking on my feet, a bit spontaneous this video, but um, look forward to your thoughts. Thank you very much. Right, where's that stomp button?